Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today we will discuss ash handling. Ash is the unburned part of the coal which is used in power plant for the heat generation. So, topics to be covered in today's lecture are first of all we will discuss about the ash handling systems, ash disposal and uses of ash in the last. <laughs> As I said earlier, ash is the unburned part of the coal which remains in the power plant and it has to be disposal. Disposal of ash is, is not is a big issue in the thermal power plants. 65, let us have some data on thermal power plants. 60 per 5 percent of the coal production is used for the power generation in India. So, approximately two third of coal is used, coal production is used for power generation in India. And the coal may contain 10 to 20 percent, very high grade coal may contain 5 or 6 percent ash also, but normally coal which is used in the power plants, 10 to 20 percent of the <coughs> coal contains the ash. Uh, if we take a 20, 200 megawatt uh, power plants, so it produces 60 kilotons per year, 60 kilotons of ash per year. Uh, it is uh, Per year, it, 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 if you want to have idea about the ash, it is it covering 4 hectares area, height of 1.5 meters, five, approximately 5 feet height, covering 4 hectares area, 1 hectare is 100 square meter. So, if you take area of let us say 200 by 200 meters, 200 meters by 200 meters, this much of area will be covered by the ash produced in a 200 megawatt plant in one year. So, this power, the normally the life of the thermal power plants is approximately 40 years. It varies, but on average comfortably we take 40 years as the life of the thermal power plant. So, 160 hectares will be required during the lifetime. So, it is a quite large area is required for the ash. So, nowadays I mean there is a thinking over how to make best use of ash which is produced in thermal power plants. Now, ash has to be handled and it has to be removed from the from, from the grate or the from the boiler and it has to be dumped somewhere else. So, there are ash handling systems because first of all suppose there is uh, uh, a boiler where the coal is burned. The coal is burned then ash handling system will come into the picture. Through ash handling system it will be transported to somewhere else. And ash handling, ash handling system, it can be a mechanical system, it can be a hydraulic system, it can be a pneumatic system or it can be a steam jet system. So, it will go to the ash pit or uh, the ash bunker. So, there may be a ash pit or ash bunker where or um, some tank can be used for the and here it is transported. So, it may be transported by truck or the railroad and then it, it will be transported for dumping or for the further use. So, ash disposal we will discuss later on. So, first of all we will start with the ash handling systems. So, mechanical handling system, hydraulic system, pneumatic system and steam jet system. Now, in mechanical systems, uh, there is a uh, conveyor belt and there are combustion chambers where from the ash is coming and it is falling on this belt and there is a water turf is a narrow lane where the water is flowing and the water and ash they make slurry and this slurry is transported to subsequently to ash bunker and from ash bunker it is transported it is sent to the truck and transported to somewhere else so this is a mechanical handling system where conveyor belt is used conveyor belt is used and on the conveyor belt there is a water turf on the water turf the ash comes from the different combustion chambers it mixed with the water turf slurry is made and then slurry comes to the bunker and then to the truck and then transported to uh, uh, some uh, other place. <coughs> now, there is a hydraulic uh, handling system also. In hydraulic handling system, again there is a water turf, there is a water turf 
and the, you can have number of water turfs and on each turf the coal comes from the source right and water comes from this side there is a force circulation right water comes from this side and there are sums right and and water is dumped into the sums sometimes we take more than uh, more than two or three sums so that one sump is filled then the the flow is diverted to another sump where the dumping of this ash takes place and meanwhile this uh, the ash which is dumped in some this sump is removed so alternatively also they can be used right so this is a hydraulic system which is uh, used for handling the ash in a thermal power plant there are a pneumatic pneumatic system also where the ash is removed un under the pressurized air right and there are steam jet system where steam is injected on the ash when steam is injected on the ash again it will make slurry and the slurry will be removed from uh, the thermal power plant they are all low velocity systems right and they can dispose of especially the mechanical type of system it can remove 5 tons of ash per hour that is the limitation of the mechanical type of uh, 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 ash handling system but there are and hydraulic system let us talk about the hydraulic system there are certain advantages of uh, hydraulic system hydraulic system first of all it is clean there is no dust it is dustless clean and the system is totally enclosed right ash carrying capacity is large there was a, as i said earlier there was a limitation for the mechanical type of system but for the hydraulic system the ash carrying capacity is large we can increase the water velocity and then we can carry away the more ash from uh, the water turf uh, and this ash can be discharged at a distance of 100 quite away from the plant 100000 sorry 1000 meters means 1 kilometer so ash can be dumped 1 kilometer away from the power plant that is there is a major benefit of hydraulic system it can be used for a stream of molten ash whole system is clean and healthy absence of working part in contact with the ash that there is no working part in contact with the ash that is the that is also an advantage of uh, this type of system water requirement is low velocity plant is more when the low well, the plant when the velocity is low in that case the water requirement is high it is four to two to four two to three times which is required for the mechanical handling system so in hydraulic handling system it is two to three times and less power is required for high velocity plant it is obviously one by three to one by two here the dust nuisance is eliminated no splage and rehandling system is flexible ash is dry there is no ash freezing this is about the air system ash is dry in the air system right the ash is dry the conveyor piping requires less space because air and ash these two things are to be handled right so only piping is required and ash will come to the pipe and it will be removed by the forced air right so <laughs> only disadvantage is wearing out the pipe that is the main advantage of the system where air is a air handling system this is pressurized this one pneumatic system for the pneumatic system that wearing out the wearing out the wearing out of the pipe is high because they are uh, the particles the ash, the ash particles they work as a abrasive material so abrasive material and the wearing of the pipe takes place due to abrasive action of uh, ash particles and they move with a very high velocity so for this reason and so the frequent maintenance is required in such type of systems now the last one is steam jet system so in the steam jet system first of all steam has to be produced somewhere if, if you want to use the steam so a, a boiler is used or steam generated in the boiler part of that steam can be used for the ash remover normally a separate uh, type of uh, steam generation system is used for this purpose uh, it is the steam generation system and is, is kept at a at a horizontal distance around 200 meters and a distance of vertical distance about uh, 30 meters in this system steam jet system because steam 
uh, contains very high energy enthalpy level is very high for steam and so less amount of steam is required so capital cost is less less space is required but here also the wearing of pipe is high as in the case of pneumatic systems operation is noisy the the pneumatic uh, system also the operation is noisy so where we deal with the gases at high velocity noise is 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 a big issue noise is a problem even in the air conditioning system there is a major limitation noise is a major limitation for the duct design so here also in the power plants wherever or not only in power plants in any plant if the air velocity if you have to deal with the high air velocity the noise becomes uh, the major issue <laughs> and it is a major limiting factor for the air velocity in any pipe and any duct and capacity is also 15 tons per hour so steam jet system so it has to be continue it has to be continuously in operation now ash disposal for the disposal of ash there are four methods one is vacuum extraction water ejector system steam ejector system mechanical conveyors now for uh, this uh, pneumatic, pneumatic ash handling system so in pneumatic ash handling system uh, from the boiler there are boilers and from the boilers the ash is sent to the crushers where ash is further converted into the fine particles and this fine particles they are connected to a pipe where high velocity air enter air with high velocity enters the pipe now after entering the pipe this I mean multi phase system this is this is a solid and uh, air two phase system this goes to a cyclone there is a cyclonic separator there can be a number of cyclonic separator this is one and extract from one can go to second one so here the separation of solid and gas takes place in cyclone due to uh, their inertia the solid edge particles are removed and the gas leaves the cyclonic converter this they are known as ash separator also ash separator and then the the gases emerging from this separator they enter the another separator where again this cyclonic action takes place and remaining part of the ash is taken away both ashes from both the sides they are collected in a bunker or and, and they can be directly collected in a collected in a truck and the removal of ash takes place and remaining part of the air this may contain some part of the ash so this gas emerging from here is sent to the filter and from filter the gas which is free from uh, the uh, the air which is free from the ash particles it goes to the air so it's starting from here where the ash comes from the boiler to the crusher and after the crusher it is mixed with the air now this air mixture of air and solid particles of ash they go to the ash separators it, due to centrifugal action the ash the solid particles of ash are removed in two three two or three stages depending upon the design and the final exhaust is sent to the filter where filtration again filtration takes place and solid particles remaining traces of the solid particles are removed and the pure in the remaining part of the gas or the air is sent to the atmosphere so this is a, a pneumatic system uh, now we have discussed steam now ash disposal so ash disposal is <laughs> first is vacuum extraction through vacuum the extraction of uh, ash is done but it, it, it consumes high high energy one is water ejector system in ejector system what happens the high velocity in, in principle the high velocity of fluid is flown over the surface right and due to high velocity low pressure is created when low pressure is created the movement of fluid or the solid from the bottom takes place in upward direction now this working fluid can be water and working fluid in this case case can be steam so any type of system uh, can be used so in so
so uh, uh, any any working fluid can be used whether it is a water or whether it is steam there are disposal for mechanical conveyors can also be used for uh, ash disposal but the mechanical conveyor the initial cost is high and there is a limitation for the distance also and maintenance of conveyor is also required for uh, such cases now uses of ash now ash is widely used in the production of cement in the cement industries nowadays it is mandatory to use fly ash but it's a, it is it, 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 it i mean uh, uh, and it is nowadays it is widely used in the production of cement the fly ash now the flash this ash can also be used for treating the acidic soil if the soil of uh, any area is acidic in nature right so to reduce the acidity if in order to reduce the acidity of the soil ash can be spread or the mix with the soil that will reduce the alkaline level of the sorry acidic level of the soil and nowadays a lot of research is going on on the on the modification of the concrete so for the cellular and the lightweight concrete for the manufacturing of the cellular and the lightweight concrete uh, the ash from power plant is being used now sintered or lightweight aggregate also for the construction work uh, it is mainly used for the construction work can be used for the cast in situ of fly ash walls are also uh, also the also made of the uh, uh, fly ash nowadays fly ash bricks are also coming i mean a lot of work is going on to make the fly ash bricks so if the fly so the the purpose is to have a win win situation once we have ash which is generated in the power plant and the disposal of ash is a big issue ash handling is a big issue because it is it is it is <coughs> low cost it is a sort of low cost high bulk item so now here there is a requirement there is a huge requirement of cement in the country oil soil is also become acid becoming acidic so in such type of applications fly ash can be used now we have amply discuss uh, the ash and the ash uh, uh, uses of ash in the power plant in power plant what we'll notice there is a lot of dust also so dust is uh, there in the power plant and this dust necessarily constitutes the fly ash plus smoke right now <coughs> they can be differentiated a smoke and fly ash can be differentiated uh, through the particle sizes the smoke particle is normally less than 1 micron uh, size of the smoke, smoke smoke particles is less than 1 micron they are very tiny particles and that is why for this reason for a long period of time they remain uh, suspended in the air okay Uh, and then another is fly ash uh, the particle size of uh, fly ash uh, ranges between uh, uh, 10 to 100 microns 1 micron is 10 to power minus 6 meter this is known as micrometer size of for for, for a ready reference size of your hair is approximate average size is 80 micrometer So size of the hair is 80 micron so when we talk about 1 micron it is not visible so smoke particles are not visible but collectively they make they 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 affect the transparency of the gases that is why we are not able to see through the smoke but the, but we cannot see the individual particles because it is less than 1 micron if you compare the size of your hair here your size is 80 microns but fly ash particle you can very well see because fly ash particles the size varies between 10 to uh, 100 microns and pulverized coal where the plants where pulverized coal is used a lot of fly ash goes out with the exhaust gases right so there the problem is more severe uh, they have certain settling velocity also and settling velocity of any particle in the air that is settling velocity is proportional to mass of the particle and size of the particle 
both settling because the size of the particle will decide uh, the buoyancy force acting on the particle right and mass of the particle will decide the gravitational force which is working on the particle so it is a function of mass and size as well so there are dust collectors in the power plants because it dust has to be removed we cannot leave the surroundings full of dust so in the power plant dust has to be removed so there are dust collectors dust collectors the basic purpose of dust collector is to collect dust so, so the easiest one is mechanical dust collector now in mechanical collectors as it is clear from the name itself they are devices which 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 depend on the mechanical processes and here a, a, a typical mechanical dust collector will be something like this if you in a duct if the dust is coming through it the dust is sucked uh, through a duct right and all of a sudden if you increase the cross section area if all of a sudden the cross section area is increased then the particle will be suspended in the air and they will they will tend to settle at the bottom side of the duct so that is one way of uh, collecting dust second is if you change the momentum of the flow suppose the 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 the, the dust the uh, the dust air full of dust is moving in this direction and all of a sudden if the direction is change particles are solid they have high density in comparison to the gas so due to inertia they will continue to move when the when the uh, air is moving in this direction out of the inertia the particle will continue to move in this direction and they will be later on they will be settled in the bottom and the air will change the direction because its moment uh, inertia is less air, air will continue to move in this direction so through this principle the uh, dust particles can be collected or in a duct suppose there is a slight enlargement in the area and baffles are provided they are obstructions so what happens in this baffles when the dust particles they strike this baffles they will lose their momentum the moment they strike this baffles they will lose their momentum and immediately they will settle down and they can be collected somewhere here so there are three methods uh, which can be used for or which are being used for as a mechanical dust collectors there another type of dust collector which are known as wet type of dust collectors because particles if there is a wet cloth and if we pass smoke through the wet cloth number of the particles will stick to the wet cloth right <coughs> so a, 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 a wet surface is provided right and water is continuously sprayed on the wet surface and when the smoke is passed through this porous surface porous wet surface particles they stick on the surface and when the particles it is just to ensure that the particles do not block the porous surface continuous water is sprayed made on the surface so this water which is sprayed on the surface serve two purpose first is removal of the solid particles second is maintaining the surface wet <coughs> so there are three type of wet surfaces one is spray type do second is pack type and third one is impingement type there are dry type surfaces also which are used for like like a filter which is a dry filter those dry filters are also used for removing the dust particles but the most efficient way of removing the dust particle is through electrical dust collector electrical dust collector now in electrical dust collector we take we remove the dust particles by <coughs> using high voltage so first of all three phase 440 volt current is used this is supply 
and this 440 volt is converted into very high volt very high volt means thousands of volts right so this is used by using high voltage transformer or step up transformer so 440 volts is increased to very high voltage then a rectifier is used now this rectifier converts the ac into dc because the electric supply is ac this is ac and this ac is converted to 40 to 80 volts sorry this is kilovolts kilovolts dc 40 to 80 kilovolt dc now this 40 to 50 uh, uh, 40 to 80 kilovolt dc is supplied to a uh, emitting uh, electrode housed in it in, in a tube or in a cylinder and this uh, emitting electrode and this is dirt dirty gas or the smoke or sorry the uh, mm, dirty gas and when it comes into the contact with the electrode because it, this this space is is highly charged okay due to this the precipitation of the uh, dust particle takes place and a clean gas comes out from the other side right so this is a sort of electrostatic uh, dust collector because it uses the principle of electrostatics now there are certain advantages of this dust collector first of all easy to operate right because there is no moving part in the entire system there is no pump and all so it is low maintenance right uh, <coughs> and this type of system can effectively remove the small particles because it works on the electrostatic principle very fine particles can be removed which cannot be removed by another process for example mechanical processes or wet uh, type of system uh, the, but uh, here because it works on the principle of electrostatics all even the small very small particles they can all they can be removed even smoke particles can be removed smoke particles cannot be removed by other techniques but here smoke particles can be removed easily uh, very effective with the high dust loaded gas dust loaded gases when dust level is very high in the gas if you use this type of uh, dust collector all the dust will be removed from the mixture and Finally, the dust is collected in the dry form, there is no wetting of the dust. So, it is collected in the dry form, if you want to transport dust, you can mix water or make it wet and you can transport it to in a slurry form. Now, there are certain because once there are advantages, there has to be certain disadvantages also. So, disadvantages are Now, disadvantages are space requirement is more because you need a transformer and transformer followed by a rectifier, rectifier followed by the entire electrode system. So, this occupies space and quite substantial space is occupied by the system and the system should be spark through because voltage is very high, voltage is of the order of 40 to 80 kilo volt, kilo, uh, kilo volt. So, the entire system should be prevented from the spark, the spark should not be there, right. So, this, so a special type of fittings have to be provided for the, uh, this type of uh, system. Running charges are high because we are using electrical energy, right. So, running charges are high if you compare with the other type of dust collection system. Running charges are high, capital cost is also high capital cost because because here the rectifier and the transformer they are, they are high end items because a lot of copper is used in making these items so 
their capital cost is high and if you look at the off design conditions efficiency if the, every machine any every instrument is designed for a particular load so this system is also designed for a particular load so if you deviate from the load <coughs> the efficiency should not fall too sharp for i'll give you an example for example this is a load and here is efficiency so at a particular load instrument is giving a very good efficiency but we do not we, sometimes we do not run a system on design load sometimes we deviate from the load so in that case efficiency should not be much affected suppose load changes plus minus 10 or 20 percent so efficiency should not be very much affected but here in this case there is a sharp fall in efficiency right so <coughs> Uh, for this reason this is one of the advantage uh, disadvantage of this type of equipment i will give you a live example if you compare the efficiency of a gas turbine and a reciprocating engine a four stroke engine the efficiency of gas turbine is much higher than the ic engine but the off design performance if you look at the off design performance the reciprocating engine will give this type of performance and gas turbine will give this type of performance so off design conditions performance is very poor and as you can understand we rarely drive any any vehicle on uh, on on design conditions we always drive them on on off design conditions so not only efficiency is important for any instrument the off design efficiency is equally in fact is more important so here in this case off design efficiency is poor so the because this is a static system so this system should be operated preferably operated on the design conditions that is all for today thank you very much